Hello everybody and welcome to this video that is going to be kind of a series of videos here um, because I've been reading some very fanciful stuff, some very fanciful stuff. This might be a lot of heavy stuff like in the weeds kind of thing, um, but I want to see how it goes. I'll try to edit this up so it's not as janky and as you can see since we're on obs doing this i have my little join my mailing list thing in case you haven't done that yet just visit i hate mattwall.com it's fun this video is brought to you by me oh my god how annoying am i okay so here we go let's get into this okay here is some things i don't understand this article is on a website called Hang on, hang on, hang on. Tonerbuzz.com. I'm pretty sure it's a um, website to buy toner for your printer. Which, honestly, since the next printer I get is going to be a toner printer, I'm quite excited <laughs> that I even stumbled across this website. But there's a couple things here. So first off, this article is called Eye-Popping Book and Reading Statistics for 2023. Posted by Rob Herrera on March 3rd, 2022. I don't think that's correct. If this is, in fact, for um, the 2023 year... I'm pretty sure um, this article was probably posted on 103-2023. I don't know. I, I, I don't know how to make heads or tails of this. But apparently, um, if this was written in March, it's written about the future. So I don't know. But there's some interesting stuff in here, nonetheless. So let's get into it. So... If we go through here, there's um, a common theme in a lot of the book statistics that I have come across, um, and it all revolves around how everyone thought COVID was going to do a lot of damage to booksellers, um, and it kind of did in the sense of brick and mortars, but it kind of didn't if those brick and mortars knew how to do anything online, okay? So this, um, these statistics about how COVID numbers people thought, you know, you know what I'm saying. So um, while many people and businesses suffered in 2020, book publishers only experienced a minor dip and actually showed gains in many areas, okay? So that already sounds weird. If you took a dip, you took a dip, whether it was minor or not. But showing gains, like the dip had to have been a big dip in a certain area in order for any gains to make any sense in a dip. Um, being quarantined indoors had people looking to the old standby books for a way to beat fear and boredom. Readers stepped up in 2021 with avid readers significantly increasing their literary intake. The latest book and reading statistics show how the industry is rebounding after a turbulent year. So the only thing I could think of is that this article was actually written in 2022 and then they just went in and edited the article and put 2023 in it. So that kind of sucks, but there are still some good things in here that we can get from this. And some of it has to do with poetry. Okay, so um, book sales were up more than 8.9% since the start of the pandemic. Okay, that isn't a huge number, but I'll take it. Okay, a lot, I think a lot of people who were like yelling and screaming about how awesome the book industry did through the pandemic and now afterwards kind of were bouncing around a, a little too much but any growth is growth so i'm not trying to downplay this but when i've heard people talk about the growth that the publishing industry had and books in general the numbers seemed great for how excited everybody was 
and um, I just wanted to bring it down a little bit before we go back up. So here are some numbers that are kind of fun. Nearly women account for nearly 80% of fiction sales. Um, young adult jumped, adult fiction jumped, children's fiction jumped. Ebook revenue was only up 11% in 2020 over 2019. That's shocking. I would have thought that would be a lot higher. Ebook revenue reached a ridiculous amount. Today, ebooks make up uh, 21% of total book sales. That's crazy. Um, I really, really would have thought, especially during the pandemic, that that would have been a ton higher. So that's that's interesting. Uh, Kindle Unlimited paid out almost forty million just in October. Jesus. Bookstore sales were approximately nine billion, up from six point five. That's huge. Um, the first four months of twenty twenty two, bookstore sales were down 23%. Now here's the thing that I don't get. This has to be a misprint too, because if you're talking about the first four months of 2022, unless they're talking financial years, I don't know. But if this article was written in March, how could they know the stats for the first four months? Whatever. Book sales peaked at 17 billion. 17 billion in 2007, but have been steadily decreasing ever since that's interesting because there are some other numbers i want to share with you from a different article which will probably be in a different video but just remember bookstore sales in between um 2004 and i would say probably 2008 really started hitting it and i have a couple theories okay so let's see we already talked about that, 21% of total book sales. Now, this is interesting because this is something that a lot of people have been talking shit on and like doing Substack articles about how this isn't true. But um, let's just check this out. So 700,000 to 1 million new book titles appear every year. However, half of these are self-published and only sell a handful of copies. Now, check this out. When the whole Penguin Random House Simon Schuster thing happened, and there was a lot of um, stats given in that trial, where they were saying, like, um, most books only sell, like, 10 or 11 copies or something like that. What a lot of people don't understand is that if you're looking at the entire publishing industry as a whole, including self-publishers in there, self-publishing on Amazon, and a million books are put out every year? Yeah, that's totally true. People have been trying to debunk this. A million books. And probably, since 50% of those are self-published, and I would probably say, I don't know, 40% of those 50% are people who don't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah, most books probably only sell 10 copies, okay? That's a huge number. So I don't know why everyone's like trying to say like, no, 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 uh, Here are some book sales statistics. Basically, more books are being sold now, but less money is coming in. By 2030, the global book market is expected to be around $163 billion, which is crazy because if you look at this number right here, 2021 was um 27 billion and that number has been basically decreasing i don't know how those numbers are coming into it now this right here it already has gone against what it said 1.5 million new titles were published globally in 2021 ebook and audiobook sales increased more than 30 percent since 2020 i completely buy that now this is a weird stat and probably one that makes a lot of sense Households with incomes of 75000 and above read more than households with incomes less than 30000 That's fucking sad. Book publishing has shrunk but remains a cornerstone of American business. The pandemic drove an increase in book sales that hopefully will continue into the post-pandemic economy. Now check this out. This is what is so bizarre here. So this starts... In 1992. Now, I want to say a couple things here. Book scan is really the only way you can judge 
how many books are being sold in a way that the publishers can't fuck with because it's an independent company. The Nielsen company does it. That didn't start until 2004. But if you look at this graph, we have stats that go all the way back. Now, a lot of these stats could be faked. Like how much of this was like the rise of Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings craze, getting into Game of Thrones craze. Like book crazes are awesome and they help the whole economy. So I get that. Um, but anything before 2004, like you ha have to be skeptical of those numbers. Second, um, those numbers, according to Nielsen, I think only represent 75% of what is probably being bought. Another way to look at this is most of the books I buy are used books. I buy used books at thrift stores. I buy used books at used bookstores. Most of the stuff that I really, really want, I get on sites like Abe and Half Price Books and Thrift Books and Better World Books if I could find an edition that I want. Okay, I rarely buy new books, but I put a lot of money into the book buying economy. You know what I'm saying? So any of these places that don't use BookScan, which is going to be like the only ones that use them are like your big stores. Okay. So it's like numbers are just weird and they're going to be off. So I don't know if Nielsen just puts out the numbers that they have and go, this is probably 75%. Or if they put the numbers they have and then add 25% to that to try to get a good swath of everything. But yeah, so in the, uh, in the um, aughts here, we reached the peak of reading. And then everything started going down, going down, and then there was a little bit of taper, and then it took a huge dip. And then like one year of pandemic reading and everyone's like, oh my God, everything's fine. By 2030, like we're all gonna be quadra billionaires and all this other shit. And I don't think it's that easy. And obviously this article is trying to make you happy and want to buy a printer for some fucking reason. I don't fucking know. 825.7 million print books were sold in the U.S. in 2021. Uh, U.S. book industry generated near, nearly 25 billion in 2019. Approximately 2,600 different companies make up the U.S. publishing industry, and that number is probably completely different now. Um, the U.S. book market is expected to generate 30 billion by 2025. What is funny is that they keep talking about what these numbers are going to be, like projections, and they talk about 2025, 2030. This is off of one year of an uptick. I'm not trying to like be the guy that shits on everyone's fucking picnic, but like the like the optimism here is. Um, bizarre especially when you see bookstores closing left and right and i mean fuck there's only if if you like i can't remember the number i should probably look it up but there is a lot less barnes and nobles even um 65 this is fucking shocking 65 percent of all new book sales online in print and digital formats are made on amazon that is fucking crazy that is fucking crazy honestly i don't even think it's because Amazon like has good prices. I don't think it's because people are on Amazon and they just happen to find a book. I think honestly, it's just two day shipping. Amazon has figured out shipping people. Other companies get on board. Amazon does two day shipping. Sometimes they do same day shipping, depending on where you live. If you could run a company and provide quick shipping, People will fucking come to you. I can't provide quick shipping. I would love to, but I'm just not that capable. But fuck. Businesses, get on it. So we have a bunch of increases. Juvenile nonfiction had a decrease. Were there any other decreases? Mass market paperbacks. That makes me cry. So those are your decreases. Juvenile nonfiction and mass market paperbacks. Okay, here's what I wanted to get to. 
poetry book sales statistics. Poetry was always a slow selling book category until the rise of social media. The short format and immediacy of social media platforms are ideal for online poets and poet books have enjoyed a sales boost in recent years. It's probably poetry books. So let's see what this is. 1.3 million volumes of poetry were sold in 2018. I wish I knew how many of those were new poetry releases. I'm sure I could find these numbers somewhere. 66% of poetry book buyers are under the age of 34. That makes sense. That checks out. 28 million adults read poetry in 2017. Why is that like the fucking... <laughs> hey, you know what? In 1978, seven people ate at fucking Dairy Queen. Like, what the fuck is that? Give us some more new information, guys. Poets.org saw an increase of 1 million visitors last year. None of this is actually helpful. The only thing in here that is an actual good number is 1.3 million volumes of poetry were sold. That's it. I wonder how many of that is Rupi Cower, because, to be honest, and I wonder how much of that is, like, old fucking Robert Frost books and shit like that. That number doesn't jump out as helpful. So, we'll see. And, and there are some other things that I want to get out with poetry, and we will look over that um, in a bit here. Popularity of e-readers seems to have leveled off in recent years, but this other place still projects the numbers of e-readers. Okay, you know what? The projections, dude. Print on demand services. This is kind of ooh. so. Um, as a result of print on demand technology, the number the number of book titles has increased from 2.3 million book titles published in 2013 to approximately 4 million new books being published in 2021. Um, the print-on-demand industry has grown 12% over the last four years. A typical self-published print-on-demand book sells less than 200 physical copies. That is probably true. The popularity of print-on-demand book publishing is, ex is expected to impact market growth. I totally 100% think that that's legit. I don't know if this ever happened, but I was like going, man, if they could do like a red box for books... And, like, just do print-on-demand. And, like, you walk up to some place and it has, like, the top however many books. Like, whatever. And you're like, oh, okay. I'll take um, the new James Patterson. And it prints it out and folds it and does all the shit and gives it to you right there. That would be kind of cool. I don't know if that's technology we have yet. But then again, reading James Patterson, you know, what are you going to do? Nonfiction outsells everything. I bet a lot of nonfiction, like a rise, not a rise in nonfiction, but like like nonfiction. I I wonder if textbooks fall into nonfiction. You know, like if that's something. But also, ever since twenty sixteen, all of the political garbage back and forth. There have been so many fucking books written about all that shit that I feel like that's probably a huge thing. Dogman is a beast. Here are the best-selling books of 2021. And then just a, a bunch of other stuff. Oh, and then we got some pyographs. This audiobook stuff, I'm not going to go through all this. Hey, the rise of audiobooks. Ebook stats, book reading statistics. Oh, this is interesting. India, Thailand, and China the Philippines and Egypt, like, um, they read longer than anyone. What is it? India reads, is that 10 hours a week or 10 minutes a day? I can't remember how the thing goes. Anyway, you could look at this. Oh, 10.5 hours a week. Americans do read less than they did 20 years ago. Um, a 26% decrease. So there's a bunch of stuff like this, sites and whatnot that you could take a look at. But yeah, so if you're interested in any of this, again, the site was tonerbuzz.com and the article is called um, Eye Popping Book and Reading Statistics 2023 
from an article that was written in March of 2022, but also in the past and in the future, whatever. I hope this was enlightening. Hope you learned something. I'm not sure I did. I thought I did when I was going to do the video on this, and now I just don't know. But that was a lot of information. Take what you will from that, and I will have another video like this very soon. So let me know down below if you dig this shit, and if you do, there will be more. So um, until next time, keep buying my books, Poetic Anarchy Volume 3, out now, off the grid, at my Etsy shop, get it while you can, type hard, and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video, and if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.